inaugural Barrett Jackson auction in Houston, Texas took the collector car world by storm. Hi everybody, I'm Rick DeBrule. Welcome to the Barrett Jackson Top 10 Series. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 sales overall from our inaugural event in Houston, Texas. You know, we had killer original cars, we had great resto mods, spectacular customs. They were all crossing the block, including some very special star cars. So you're gonna wanna watch, and we're gonna start with number 10, of course, a 1956 Ford F100. It's a big window custom pickup truck. Let's see what it sells for. 1956 Ford F100, big window, custom pro touring build. Folks, this is one of the most gorgeous pickups we've had in a sale. Absolutely flawless. Gen 2 Coyote under the hood. We've looked at this thing. It's been massaged. It's been dialed in. And here's an opportunity to buy a piece of art. Absolutely gorgeous truck at Barrett Jackson in Houston at no reserve, Shane. All right. Well, here's the Mighty Coyote, which is something that's kind of a new thing to the world of Ford swappers. I'm loving this. It used to be you put a 302 or something like that in here, but that's the Coyote twin cam, four valves. Let's have a look at the chassis cam underneath this beautiful resto mod. Now, this has been stretched four inches from stock. It rides on a roads and shop chassis. There's the underside of that cha the camera, headers, automatic transmission, open drive. Again, that's the custom Art Morrison chassis, or sorry, a roadster shop. And it has a nine inch rear axle with coil overs. Man, is that beautiful. This is a Metal Brothers build. The front fenders stretched two and a half inches. The rear fenders have been pulled three and a half inches. All of the trim is done in that beautiful satin platinum. This is the most beautiful truck I have ever seen cross the block at Barrett Jackson. This is absolutely incredible. I'd be afraid to drive it. I just want to put it in my living room and sit there and look at it. It's only been driven 150 miles since it was built, so I think whoever's had it kind of feels the same way as you. On the tailgate, you see these machined aluminum Ford logo. This looks like something would come out of Ford styling. I mean, just really above and beyond the call of duty. Another thing, too, about this is that this has a stretched nose. In 1953, Ford shortened the front of their pickup trucks for better maneuverability around the farmyard or wherever, but it made them look kind of stubby. Well, this has been unstubbified. If you've seen it from the side, it looks kind of long and graceful. That's custom, very subtle work that you don't find on any other Ford pickup but here. The wood in the bed is a very subtle two-tone. I didn't notice that before, and it's been polished as much as the bodywork on this one. Uh, we'll move some of the papers here so Victor can get a great shot inside. This is just incredible. And that cab, by the way, has been chopped by about an inch and a half, so it's hard to find, well, not hard to find, impossible to find the seams to show all the work that was done. A very Euro style interior with the uh, tweed style carpet. Belting. Wow. Well, it won Truck of the Year at the F100 Grand Nationals in 2020, and it just crossed the block and sold for $250,000. We've got a tie at number nine for the top 10 sales overall at the Barrett Jackson auction in Houston, Texas. We'll start with a 1967 Ford Mustang. This was an Eleanor tribute, a fully licensed Eleanor tribute, and it was tied with a 1962 Corvette topless roadster. Now this is a car that I previewed yesterday and I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan, so I'm back looking at it again before it goes up the block. I'll channel my inner Nicolas Cage eyes here. Lot 443, a 1967 Shelby GT500 or Eleanor in the movie. And you can see they started with an all new Ford body here. So nothing really old Mustang about this thing. Uh, under the hood, a big block Ford supercharger. Of course, it has the correct Eleanor body kit. And on the inside, you have a beautiful interior with nitrous and of course the famous go baby go button. This is an immaculate build and I imagine all of us seeing the movie 20 years ago came out of the theater wanting to buy this car and well, here's your chance to buy one of the nicest ones I have ever seen. Well, there have been not one, but two Gone in 60 Seconds movies. The original by a stuntman Toby Hallecky, who was the producer and director and star of the original movie. And, of course, Eleanor was the most beloved star car. And then, of course, the follow-on with Nicolas Cage. But Eleanor became so famous from the movie 
that people started doing repop Eleanor's and then uh, Denise Halicki began taking legal action against them. So there became a program to do officially licensed Eleanor cars and this is one of those. Now, speaking of reproductions and officially licensed things, this is a reproduction body shell. A variety of companies offer them. Of course, Ford must give them their blessing, so there's no rust hiding in this one. This is a brand new body shell. I'll tell you what, we have shot past everything else to be the number one seller of the day. We're at 180, 185,000 and still going. The cost of one of those body shells is about $17,500. And to be honest, it's a small price to pay versus trying to scrub all the rust out of an old body shell from any of the Rust Belt states. You might get lucky and find a Western shell, but for the most part, seventeen grand is a bargain. Buy that and forget about rusty old stuff. So part of the money here is in the build, and the rest is in the provenance. You saw that Carol Shelby had signed the slam panel under the hood, and he has signed the dash, and we're at $200,000. We're at 200 and still going, 215. Boy, and I love the way the crowd has gathered at the exit ramp. They want to see the car that's getting everybody's attention. And the bitter assistance, the ringmen and women are virtually running back and forth between their bidder and the block to make sure their bid gets recorded. Love that blue key lighting in the interior and down below. This is crazy go nuts time at Barrett Jackson. $280,000 for a replica, an authorized replica of a famous movie car. But remember what we've seen in the Corvette world, the resto mods, everything being done so nicely. We're closing in, getting really close to $300,000. We got it. thousand dollars for a 1967 Ford Mustang Eleanor Tribute and this is a Corvette we have all watched out in the staging area we've seen it for the last couple days this is a piece of, truly a piece of art a 1962 Corvette custom and let's call this not a convertible but a topless roadster well, the thing I like about it, it merges a lot of Corvette parts from different Corvette families. It has C4 Corvette aluminum suspension front and rear and the massive disc brakes. Under the hood is an LS7, which is the 427, which debuted in the Z06 in 2006. The beauty of that engine, titanium connecting rods, yup, in a production engine. 7,000 RPM, yup, no problem. Great little engine. A beautiful champagne metallic with just a very hint of green to it. Uh, custom taillights as well. And these rear fenders have been pulled to accommodate wide wheels and tires. The difference between a Roadster and a convertible is simple. A convertible, you can raise the top. A Roadster has none. I like the uh, exhaust outlet in the center below the license plate, sort of a triangular billet shape. Really well made. Hides and plain sight. That's not stock, but it looks like it could very well be. Now, one thing that was standard on Corvettes of this era, the grab handle. And yes, that was for passenger use when the driver would lean over and go, you better hold on. <laughs> there you could. This one is an automatic, thus we can see the straight gate in the shifter. It's got a 4L65G, which is a four-speed automatic. It's all good. No clutch pedal required here. Although the shift ball is very retro, that chrome ball, very typical of what this car would have had from the factory with a four-speed underneath it. This car has already gone to a number of shows. It's already won a number of awards. bringing solid money here at Barrett Jackson. I think that was a knockout punch bid that just came in. 
It had been moving at five and ten, and that gentleman right there went, just say 300 and call it quits so we can move on, and that's exactly what happened. Time for the number eight overall sale. In this case, we have another Eleanor, another fully licensed tribute. This one, though, has a very modern Coyote engine under the hood, so let's see how it rocked the block. So watch what happens here with this Eleanor. Yesterday, we had one sell for, what, $300,000. It was, by a wide margin, the high sale of the day, and it is headed for a collection here in Texas in Austin. And a friend of mine spoke to the buyer of that car yesterday, and he said, I might just come back today and buy the other one. Wilkins. Well, like under the hood, we have the Coyote engine, and this is basically bone stock with the uh, plastic shroud and the ram tube cover, and that's okay. These are very attractive engines. And of course, right here, we see the official Eleanor Tribute Edition licensing tag here. Very important if you want to have one of these and make everybody happy. Uh, gone in 60 seconds, performance. Yeah, pretty, pretty piece, I like this. It's backed up by a six-speed automatic transmission. No need to drive a stick if you can enjoy this one. So here's a whole lot, of Victor, of movie memorabilia to go along with the car. Photos of the movie stars in the second gone of 60 seconds. Certificate of authenticity, movie poster. Lots here, and this all goes with the car. This car was originally built as a six-cylinder, T-code, 200 cubic inch Mustang fastback, but that was then. <laughs> this is now leaf spring rear suspension, long gone, replaced by coil over shock absorbers and a four-link system. Don't you wish cars had emotions? I swear some of mine did. It's like, I'm not going to start for you today, no way. But if this one did, born as a little six-cylinder secretary Mustang, if it only knew what it was going to become years later. Like those Mercury Cougar-inspired full-width taillights. Of course, the Mustang would have had three little slits on each side, but uh, again, Shelby Mustangs adopted this look in 1967. Looks great. Complements the width and the low lines of the fastback body. Well, yesterday, the Eleanor sold for 300000 and that's where we are today. Will it go over? Let's find out. Uh, the bidder on stage represents several major collections. He is on the phone uh, with the buyer he represents. Inside, we see the Go Baby Go, the red button there. And the end of it is the infamous button that Nicholas Cage's character would push to engage the nitrous oxide and another 200 or so horsepower. Inside the nice. trunk. You Two. need nerves of steel to finish this bid off. We're over 300. It was 305, 310. Now we're up to 315. Inside the trunk, you see the C-panel mounted fuel filler has a transfer tube running to the tank. The one bidder was sitting there going, come on, finish it off, hammer it so. At the last fraction of a second, the call came through and said, yes, hit it one more time. And that bidder out there in the seats, out in the front rows, just can't believe it, because here we go. $325,000 makes that the number one selling Eleanor. For number seven, we're going to move from the Ford world to the Chevrolet world. The 1963 Corvette split window custom. This one, a fresh build by Jeff Hayes, 540 horsepower. Let's check it out. Lot number 733 is a 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Split Window Custom Coupe. This 1963 Split Window Resto Mod was completed in March of 2021. Features a brand new LS3 hot cam engine with 540 horsepower, backed by a 4L70E automatic transmission. <laughs> Six 
This beautiful 1963 split window resto mod was completed in March 2021 by Jeff Hayes Customs. Started with a clean original GM donor car. Now it has that lot, that hot LS3 hot cam 540 horsepower engine. Jeff Hayes Customs put the LS3 in this one with an overdrive automatic, 540 horsepower, an Art Morrison Sport chassis, Willwood brakes. Only the body shape seems to be 63 here. I like how the rear wheel openings have been stretched to accommodate those massive wheels and thin red line sidewalls. Beautiful. Well, we had internet bidders, we had phone bidders, we had bidders in the sky box, and the final price, $360,000. Before we get to the number six overall sale from the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston, Texas, the inaugural event, you're going to want to make sure that you click right down there to subscribe to the entire series of Barrett Jackson videos, especially our top 10 list. All right, what was number six? Well, it turned out to be a very expensive 2005 Ford GT Torch Red. Now, this one's a lot more stock looking, obviously, and they actually unveiled the GT on the 100th anniversary of Ford in 2003. They came out in 2005, and they were actually kind of slow to sell. They planned to make 4,500 of them. I think they only sold a little over 4,000. So imagine struggling to get that $150,000 MSRP. Uh, if you bought one back then, you were pretty smart if you still have it today. Now, there were only four options available on these cars. The painted stripes was one. The BBS wheels was two, the painted brake calipers was three, and the Macintosh stereo system was four. That was it. Well, to your point, Mike, the lightweight wheels were $3,500, replacing the six-spoke wheels seen on most of these. And yeah, those painted calipers, $750. You know what's interesting, these cars, while they look like the original GT40, it's actually just slightly larger in every dimension. But there's one unique thing that the GT40s had when they were racing, people don't realize it, they actually had luggage compartments. The race car that raced in the late 60s had to have a luggage compartment. So another comparison. You know, speaking of those painted calipers, we see back here the big caliper, the primary one. What's this little tiny guy back here doing? What is that? Well, that's the parking brake caliper, unlike Corvette, which had an internal brake drum on their 63 through 70 or 82. This has a secondary caliper for the parking brake. Now you know. One owner, 6,300 miles, all four available options. These cars are great drivers. The clutch is light, so it's easy to get going. Once you get past the idea of the thick windshield pillars, they're very easy to drive. As for backing up, don't bother, you can't see. So, well, if Formula One drivers can get used to the halo, I think you can get to the big A pillars. $375,000 for a Ford GT. Oh, so you like Ford GTs? Well, I've got good news for you. We've got two more. They were tied at number five on the overall top 10 list. Two of them, 2006, a pair of Ford GTs, one yellow, one black. Let's see what they sell for. Up on the block right now, a 2006 Ford GT, one of three Ford GTs from this generation that we're going to see crossing the block. Well, that Ferrari was modified and there was no going back, but with this one, they did it just right, especially with a low mileage, rare color 2006 GT like this. The yellow is satin, but it is the factory color. They covered it with a wrap, a transparent wrap to give it the satin look. This was actually a striped elite car. Most of them had the stripes. They also changed the wheels and the exhaust, but it includes the original exhaust. So if you wanted to go back to the stock car, you could, but now it's very well protected, the original paint. Well, I am amazed that we're at $300,000 because I took one look at the flat finish on this one and said, well, no thanks. I'll take one of the ones coming up.
but the bidders love it. Look at this, 325. That makes it the number one sale, not only of the day, but of the auction so far, not counting the two charity sales. Well, that's $200,000 more than the $139,000 this price new. The thing I love about these cars is Ford made a lot of them, 4038 Plenty to go around if you got the bucks. Holy cow, the bid just left. It was less than $350,000. Somebody threw up their hand and said $400,000. And this car has been enjoyed 8,000 miles on the clock. It's not been a garage queen. You want to throw a knockout punch? That gentleman just did it. $400,000 for a custom 2006 Ford GT Speed Yellow. Very unique. 2006 Ford GT. This one owner, Mark II, black Ford GT with a black interior, is in excellent condition. Assembled at the Wixom assembly plant on February 21st, 2006. This vehicle is number 688 of only 2011, built in 2006, and is a number 92 of 292. Power comes from the 5.4 liter supercharged V8 engine, manual six speed transmission, 5,000 original miles. $400,000. At number four on our overall top 10, a 1966 Shelby GT350. Now those are special on their own, but this one, oh, this one has an amazing story behind it. This one was owned by Sir Sterling Moss, the great race car driver, one of his favorite cars to do historic racing in. And boy, when it crossed the block, it got everybody's attention. Lot number 741, this is a 1966 Shelby GT350 owned by Sir Sterling Moss. Moss stated on more than one occasion that this R specification GT350 was one of his favorite historic race cars. Power comes from a 289. These were K codes when they started life, four speed. The car was raced by Sir Sterling Moss at nine different locations across Europe from 1991 to 1997, including a win at the Targa Tasmania. During the Concours in Houston, Texas, ironically, in 2007, Carroll Shelby drove this car across stage announcing it would for hereafter be known as the Moss car. Lot number 741, take a look. The well, this is the Sterling Moss Shelby. This began as a regular GT350. Noted restorer and Shelby expert Chris Liebenberg, who now runs Three Dog Garage in Pennsylvania for vintage racer and collector Ross Myers, converted this to R-code spec. Peter Levanos, the owner of Aston Martin, bought it, vintage raced it, and sold it to Sir Sterling Moss. And over a period of nine uh, years, he raced it at vintage events in Europe and won the Targa Tasmania. Carol Shelby uh, drove it up onto an auction block and said, this is the Moss GT350 and always will be. He is, Sir Sterling has signed it in the trunk. And boy, what a great piece of Shelby history and of auto racing history in general. There were 36 actual R-types built, and one of the key noters is right here on the front, this front valance with an air, no front bumper, but that's R-type stuff added to this street model. And again, not one of the 36, but mechanically the same. Well, sometimes you value race cars by adding the combination of the car itself together with the driver and the performance. Yes! We've got a great car, a Shelby GT350, an amazing driver, Sir Sterling Moss, and a car he won in vintage racing with. 
Right, to be perfectly clear, Moss never raced this car in period. In period, it was not a race car, but it was converted to vintage racing spec, and Sir Sterling had a lot of fun and a bunch of trophies in this one. On the rear of Valance, we do not see the reverse marker lights, which would come along yes, for 1966 on Shelby GT350. So that's a marker that it is a carryover. Yes. He has 400. Do you want me 425? A hood pin secures the trunk the lid, underneath which you shall see the signature has 410 online. of the be best British driver never to win the Formula One World Championship. He certainly won everything else there yes, was to win. The external battery kill switch on top of the rear quarter panel. Again, trunk rented battery, part of the picture for the R-Type. Aluminum mag racing wheels here. These are not uh, the magnesium ones you would have found back in the day. These are actually aluminum modern ones. The uh, crow's foot here, fork thrust D, correct, visually, but not a magnesium as it would have been back in 65. Plastic rear window on the GT350s. Uh, that would vent air from the cockpit. This is plastic and the spare tire mount and roll cage. All very correct. We've got a phone bidder. We've got an internet bidder. We're at four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. The current bid on the Sterling Moss GT350. It is interesting to see that Sterling Moss campaigned this car in the 1990s with the stock Mustang brakes. The Kelsey Hayes discs up front and drums in the back. I'm guessing perhaps the SCCA did not allow modern brake upgrades. Is that possible, Mike? And a nostalgia SCCA Trans Am? Don't know, but the drums are here on the back of this one. In the center of the rear wheel, you see the Summers Brothers stand. These are aftermarket axles. We have a new top seller of the day here at Barrett Jackson. This 1966 Shelby GT350 just sold for $450,000. Time for the top three overall sales from the inaugural Barrett Jackson collector car auction in Houston. And you know, when people first bought the latest generation of the Ford GT, they had to sign a document that said they wouldn't sell it for two years. Well, for some of those owners, the two years is up and we're seeing them start to cross the auction block and they're bringing really big money when that happens. So let's check out this 2019 Ford GT and see what it hammer sold for. This is a 2019 Ford GT up on the block. The new Ford GT in its third year of production. These are all built on a line in Canada, Multimatic. We're at half a million dollars already. This car gets its roll cage and its bonded body on the assembly line before it even knows if it's gonna be a race car or a road car. Three quarters of a million. Boy, this accelerates fast. Are powered by a V6 engine, although Ford did consider V8s and even V12s in the recipe, but the reality is the six cylinder is shorter, which allowed better work here in the tail with the hallways going through. A longer V8 or 12 would not have allowed that very special touch. Ivory interior here to uh, somewhat match up with the white stripes on it. Liquid blue is the color. The doors come up somewhat butterfly style, and you see all of that carbon fiber that makes up the monocoque or tub. Great thing about it is what they've done with the door sill. When you go back out, they don't have a big piece. The door itself comes up, so you've got easy access into, as opposed to having to step completely across the full width of the car. Carbon fiber wheels are an option. They save about one and a half pounds per corner compared to the BBS forged wheels that are standard. Pretty well option car, does not have the Akrapovich titanium exhaust. But boy, that liquid blue is sharp and we're closing in on a million dollars. And the car has less than 20 miles on the odometer. Something else that adds value to this Ford GT. Remember, it wasn't that long ago, we couldn't see him cross the block because of the deal that had to be made between buyers and Ford. Correct. Ford puts a lien on every new GT for two years. The owner must maintain and hold the car for two years before offering it to sale. Uh, that to prevent people just buying them and flipping them. Also, the dealers were involved in the buying process, but not in the price negotiation. Every one of these was sold at sticker price. $10,000 for a 2019 Ford GT with less than 20 miles on the odometer. 
So what did it take to be the number two overall sale at the Barrett-Jackson auction in Houston? Well, how about almost 650 horsepower? How about zero to 60 in less than three seconds and a top speed of 216 miles an hour? Uh, the car that did it wasn't just another Ford GT. It was a 2019 Ford GT lightweight. And boy, when it crossed the block, it sold at an amazing price. Now this is a 2019 Ford GT, but this one is special because this one is a lightweight. Yeah, during the production run of the Ford GT, Ford has had, they've had heritage editions and they've had little specials uh, like this one, the lightweight, which you can instantly tell because the twin stripes are done in exposed carbon fiber. That's one of the hallmarks of the lightweight edition. Of course, carbon fiber wheels, exposed carbon fiber all around the bodywork. This one's gonna rock the block. Hold on to your wallet. Yeah, the lightweight edition included things that were very hidden, including titanium exhaust headers versus stainless on the standard ones. All of that was to reduce some pounds. In fact, these even have a, a titanium steering wheel tube. $70,000 is what you paid for all that lightness. Add to that, titanium lug nuts. Yes. He is a purpose-built trailer designed specifically for the Ford GT. Absolutely flawless. Craig Halls is around, picks mine up once in a while. Absolutely beautiful trailers. This car is unobtainable except right now at Barrett-Jackson. Lightweight with that polished carbon, spectacular car. Can't say anything else about it. It is a buy right now. 50, 75, and 75. Akrapovich provides the titanium exhaust for these cars and to machine titanium into this gentle curve here for this exhaust pipe. That is not easy. Yeah, it's true. I used to machine titanium rocker arms for Hemi's at stage five, and it's weird stuff. It gets kind of gummy, not like stainless or any other type of a metal. It's weird stuff, but it's very, very uh, light and strong. It was Dan Gurney who brought titanium from the aerospace industry to auto racing. And when people asked, what's that? He would reply, unobtainium. Just another one of Dan Gurney's innovations. We're up to $970,000. Question is, can it make a million? Titanium fasteners entered the world of drag racing courtesy of a company called Trick Titanium in Michigan. Right around 1970, the Motown missile was loaded with parts from them. When the production run ends, this is going to be one of the rarest variants of the new Ford GT. I'd say this is a bargain right here. Stalled at about 970, and then it just suddenly rocketed past a million. So, and it sells for 1.1 million. That 2019 Ford GT lightweight. Wow. All right, time to show you the number one overall sale from the Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston. And I have to tell you, this one surprised everybody. It was a 1979 Porsche 928. Now that's a great car, but this one, oh, it was so special. This one is the one that was used in the movie Risky Business, driven by Tom Cruise. And as the story goes, this is the one he actually learned to drive a stick shift in. And boy, I tell you, when it crossed the block and sold for a record amount, well, it got everybody's attention. Well, we've talked a lot about this next car. It's a 1979 Porsche 928, but this one's special. This is the one from the movie Risky Business. We are told there were three Porsche 928s used in the filming of the movie, and that this was the hero car, the primary camera car used for close-ups of Tom Cruise and his co-stars in the movie. Uh, the producer says he's taught Cruz to drive a stick using this exact car. And the passenger sun visor is signed by members of the movie cast.
Now, importantly, this was not the 928 used in the which one of you is the U-boat commander scene of pulling the 928 from the lake and off to the dealership. Yeah, that car was just a shell with no engine. This is the real thing. Interestingly, they approached Porsche and said, would you be willing to supply us cars? And Porsche looked at the script and said, it involves prostitutes? No thanks. We're over $300,000. Well, look at that. We're working three separate phone bidders up there together with whoever else might be in the room. People are interested in this car. We're over $400,000 right now. I'm going to ask Victor if he can. Whoa, we're up to half a million dollars in a hurry. Uh, Victor, I'm not sure if you can see the sun visor if I fold it down here and get a look at the signatures that are on there from some of the cast of the movie Risky Business. Thanks. This is not stopping. We are at $650,000 and still moving. Wonder if you get the consigner's pair of Ray-Bans with the car. There are four separate phone bidders involved in this transaction right now. I have been a part of many special moments at Barrett Jackson, but this is taking the cake. Well, I don't know who's on the other end of the phone with that lady at the end, but they are in it to win it. If Joel's mother had sold the car for this, she wouldn't have had to worry about her Fabergé egg. That was awesome. Well, as Tom Cruise says in the movie, Porsche. There is no substitute. There was absolutely no substitute for that. 
transmission in that car. Piece of history. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on. Wow, to I'm going to have to take a break just so I can take a breath after that rolls off the block. That will do it for the overall top 10 from the Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction, the inaugural event in Houston, Texas. If you want more Barrett Jackson videos, just click right there, and the next one's going to pop up right there.